what is going on guys and welcome back to the next iteration in this DaVinci Resolve tutorial today we're gonna actually be getting into um, handy dandy keyframes and splines so basically we're gonna be getting into some animation in the fusion page now this is some really really good stuff you're definitely gonna want to pay really close attention to this one and it's gonna get a little bit more complex in fusion so bear with me guys I promise it will come to a nice four and you guys will come to a good understanding so without any delay let's go ahead and jump into the software so here we are in DaVinci Resolve again, and today we are recapping what we uh, learned last week. So as you guys saw, we were able to take text, merge that onto a transform uh, video clip. So this video clip now can be controlled, as you guys can see, you can move it around, so on and so forth. But we're going to add on to this, okay? We're going to build on to what we've been learning. That way you can kind of see uh, how all this stuff kind of comes together a little bit on what we've learned, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into the software again. And let's go ahead and go up here to Effects. And I want to show you guys how to do some animation here in Fusion. So if you click on Effects here at the top, uh, what we want to do is we want to go to... Um, you see how you have all these different effects here? under tools make sure you're under tools and uh, what you're gonna want to do is we're gonna look for shape one so this is like 3d this is blur stuff color FX color um, so I was actually at it when I first started here so let me go back to it um, it is somewhere down here I think that's the easiest to work with when it comes to animation because it's just simple graphics and you don't have to bring in any external um, assets to be able to do it so you can see we have shapes uh, right here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put a shape onto the screen we're gonna make it move around and that's pretty much it okay so let's go ahead and do that so if you go back into the software we're gonna go ahead and put a let's just pull in a rectangle and drag it into the fusion page and um, you know the natural inclination let's go ahead and pause here for a second is to say oh okay um, let me go ahead and put this and let me obviously I need to put that on top of what we have so I gotta bring in a merge right connect it into the merge but hey, it's not working. Why is this not connecting into the merge? Right? Whoops. What what's going on here? Well, the reason why this is not working is because anytime you bring in a shape, that shape has its own rendering engine as well. And so you kind of have to bring in a shape renderer. So let me guys show you guys where that is. Okay. So if you go back into the software and you go over here to the left hand side, you'll see where it says S render or shape render. So you'll need to bring that in, okay? So once you bring that in, you'll notice that both of these have like a purple ribbon underneath it. That's really to indicate that we are dealing with shapes. OK, and so if you go ahead and take this shape and connect it into the render, you still don't see it. <laughs> You're probably like, wait, what's going on? Well, the reason why is because it's not connected to our output. So if I just break this connection here and we connect it into our output, you'll now see this shape went to the screen. OK, now. That still doesn't allow us to put it on top of the video, right? So as we've learned in our previous video, let's keep it simple, right? So let's connect this back. And all you have to do is merge that on top of this. So connect it into another merge, connect that into the output, and then connect the render to be on top of the merge. And now you can see that we have our uh, square right on top of our video clip, okay? So basically we have a rectangle that is being rendered on top of text that is on top of the transformed video clip. Okay, you guys feel me? You guys picking up what I'm putting down? All right. So again, I told you it's going to get a little complicated, but I hope that that makes sense. So we're putting all of this on top of all of this, right? Because remember our merge, as we learned in our previous video, is how we put things on top of things. So now what we're going to do is take our rectangle and honestly, I don't like the rectangle as it is. I want to change the color of it. So if you click on your rectangle right here, you can actually go to style and then you can change the color to whatever you want. I'll go for more of this like blue color since that's like the vibe of my little film here. And um, yeah, and I want to move my rectangle around a little bit. So let me, but uh, it's actually kind of big. Can I make it any smaller? Um, it looks like. Uh, you can probably with some of these controls, but I don't really like that. Um, I would like to have full control over it. So what do you guys think we can put in between this render and being it be merged? What can we feed this into in order to uh, change its size? Well, as we learned in our previous videos, we can actually use the transform node. See how this is all coming together? 
So if we go back to the software, let's give ourselves a little bit of space. Let's bring in the transform node here. Let's drag it in. Let's connect that into the transform. And then let's actually move our transform down like this and send that out to the, uh, to the merge. And now you'll see when I click on transform, I get not only the same crosshairs that we saw before, but I'm also able to change the size of it over here in the transform node. So now I can make it as small as I want it, as you guys can see. And then, of course, I can then move it around uh, as I see fit. And in fact, you can actually move it around with the transform node, which is actually really, really cool. OK. All right, guys. Now, the last and final piece to this, now that we have this all set up, is we want the square to move. So this is where it gets really, really neat so let's say for example you take your square and let's go to our transform let's work on our transform it's really easy to animate here i'm going to go ahead and hit a keyframe right just like you would in the edit page as we've learned in our video hit a keyframe at the very beginning and then when it moves to about halfway i want this square to like move over here now you see how this line is showing you where it's going to go this is why i like editing in the fusion page when it comes to animation as opposed to the edit page just because it really can show you the path and you can create paths and make things move in certain ways which we'll get into uh, later down the road and um so yeah let's go ahead and make another keyframe maybe at the end of the video uh this the square will actually move across to here okay so now if i play this back you guys will see our animation is here and there we have it so of course, the last thing that we need to do, though, is we need to smooth this out. Maybe we don't want this to go really stable like a robot. Maybe we want to kind of go, you know, kind of come in a little bit and then speed up and then, right, slow back down. And that's where our splines come in, okay? So we go ahead and hit on splines here. And by the way, while we're up here, you can actually hit keyframes, too. You can actually see all the keyframes that uh, we have actually entered here, which is really, really nice. But I'm actually going to turn off keyframes to keep things simple, and we're going to go back to Spline, okay? Now, when you hit Spline, you'll notice that this big box opened up here in the very, very bottom. So all you need to do in order to make this work is, or to actually to make a better workspace for yourself, is make this bigger because you're going to see why here in just a second. And uh, what we need to do is enable what we want to affect or work on, what animation line. So we want to work on the transform, right? Because that's what we've been working on over here. And that's where our keyframes over here are, as you can, in as indicated over here, right? So what we want to do is click on transform here. And actually, you can collapse this. We don't need to worry about its displacement and center and all that stuff. Um, and then you'll now see this little spline line right here. And you can actually middle mouse click to kind of like move this around and so on and so forth. Um, you can also hold control and scroll out to be able to scroll out as well. Uh, just keep in mind that you can't click around here. Okay, if you can't click around in here, as you can see, you can only select uh, keyframes okay on our animation and you'll see that as we select one that corresponds to the spot that we have selected in our video now one thing i want to tell you is that this playhead is a little finicky so you actually have to come to the playhead to move it around but honestly i don't recommend using the playhead movement here i would recommend just putting it right here okay so using this strip right across here all right and as you would expect um if you wanted to smooth out one of these keyframes let's just click on the middle one here um, you can go ahead and see that you have all these different types of tools you can use to make this animation be a lot smoother. Something that you guys are very familiar with if you guys have been animating in keyframes and using splines before, um, as we've learned in our previous video in the edit page. The same thing, only a difference is you just have a lot more going on here on the left, and you have a lot more control here on the right as well, and you can really build things in a really, really neat way with the fusion compositions that you can get into, okay? So, uh, simple, as this is, uh, simple as this, all you have to do is click on this spline here, and then you'll see that this little white bar, so we can actually scroll in, you'll see this white bar came across here, that just like you're familiar with, and you can take this and start bending this, making it longer, you know, smoother, so on and so forth. So, let's go ahead and take a look at this, obviously it's going to go backwards and then forwards a little bit, because uh there it goes and well, maybe it didn't go backwards okay it wasn't enough of a peak but uh we can make it go backwards a little bit if we do something like that so let's go ahead and move this backwards boom bounce go back boom go back forward and voila okay 
so yeah i think that is pretty much um splines and keyframes in a nutshell in the fusion page i don't want to overwhelm you guys because there is a ton that you can do with this in the fusion page and there's a ton that you can do in fusion all together but i hope that you guys found that useful and the next course that we're going to get into is going to be really 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 cool um it's going to be really necessary for matching things up and in, in 3d space and then we're going to get into tracking as well okay so uh yeah this is we're we're on the long haul guys so i hope you guys are having a wonderful day a wonderful week and a wonderful year and we'll see you guys in the next video take care